So there seems to be an obsession with being confident that has found its way to every corner of the internet. Thousands of TikTok accounts and YouTube channels are desperately trying to teach you how to be confident. But why the obsession? How confident can we really be and what is true confidence anyway? Let's find out. How is confidence presented to us? If you were to describe someone confident, you might think of someone with good looks, good hair, a good sense of style, money, and an extroverted personality. But this idea is influenced by the never-ending stream of consumerism that is constantly presented to us everywhere, especially in social media. Rich and successful people buy expensive things and we end up wanting and expecting this from ourselves and feel ashamed when we don't. What everyone is obsessed with is not confidence, but a performance of it and the image of an extravagant lifestyle. After all, true confidence doesn't come from what you wear or have. It comes from feeling secure in who you are and being able to trust yourself and your abilities. Why is there a lack of confidence? What changed that confidence seems to be in short supply? The origins of our confidence lies in our childhoods. This is where we achieve, or fail to achieve, self-confidence and self-esteem. As shown in a study published in the elementary school journal, young children build confidence and self-esteem through successful experiences. Knowing that we can succeed makes us feel more capable, but measuring that success creates another obstacle. It is a delicate balance. If we are praised too much, we might become mean and overconfident. With egos that are extremely delicate and bound to be shattered, too little praise and we may feel like there is no such thing as being good enough. Our parents are our first teachers and we rely on them to tell us if we are doing things correctly. Our parents affect our confidence and self-esteem into adolescence, where we start to get an understanding of who we are or who we want to be. Social media undeniably plays a role in how we view ourselves, but it also depends on how we engage with social media. If you're only ever on social media for memes rather than lifestyle content, for example, you probably won't feel as much pressure to adhere to the standards of the content you engage with. Why is confidence hard to obtain? It can feel like we're always competing with those around us, when you're feeling proud of a drawing you did, but find out someone your age or younger can draw better than you, your confidence may take a hit. The same applies to anything that we define ourselves by. If you're a good writer, you like to go to the gym, or you have a good sense of style, the confidence that you get from these things also puts you at risk of becoming insecure about those very things. This is why confidence is particularly difficult to obtain for the generations growing up on the internet. There's always someone better than us right there on the front page. Studies have found that the old saying, comparison is the thief of joy, or in this case, confidence, is quite true. We are obsessed with confidence because everyone else seems to have it or deserve it except us. What will confidence change for you? There is a huge difference between the portrayal of confidence and actual confidence. People often mistake confident attitudes with uncaring, apathetic, and insincere attitudes. By acting confident in ways that people expect, you rob yourself of true confidence. True confidence is something specific to yourself. Maybe confidence is feeling assured in your line of work, enjoying your hobbies without worrying about people judging you or having a strong sense of self-worth. These kinds of confidence have been found to increase your motivation and also help against imposter syndrome and feel unworthy of friends or romantic relationships. Considering this, the obsession with confidence is a cultural phenomenon that is being spurred on by social media. If you want to be confident, your goals should be personal rather than general. Are the things you aspire to and the ways that you better yourself unique and personal to you? Or do you do these things simply to come across as confident rather than to be confident? There are no rules for confidence. Confidence is a state of being, not something that can be obtained through fulfilling an established list of requirements. It can be affected by external actions and how others interact with you, but it is ultimately an internal process. Our obsession with confidence comes from how valuable it seems to be while seeming impossible to get. We all want to feel like we are good at what we do. We are happy with how we look and we don't care about what others think. We think of confidence as a reward for doing things correctly, but every person has their own relationship with confidence. Don't let others tell you it will make you feel confident. Find out for yourself. If it means wearing your hair a certain way or improving in your hobbies, embrace that. What is your relationship with confidence like? Let us know in the comments below. If this video taught you something new about confidence, let us know by leaving a like. Remember to subscribe to Psych2Go for more videos like this.